All right, in your Bible, please, I want you to go over to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. On Friday, uh, Brother Bill and I uh, went to a section up in Goose Creek and gave out several flyers. <clears throat> and then yesterday afternoon, I found a place uh, up there that I had not been before, new houses and so forth and so on. So I took the opportunity of giving out a lot of flyers up there. And what I'm asking you to do is to pray for those flyers that we gave out and the people that we gave them to, that we might see somebody born again. Let me just say this real quickly, and I'm talking to me as well as you. One day when we stand before the Lord at the judgment seat, we'll give an account to him concerning whether we've witnessed or not. Wouldn't it be an awful thing to have no rewards at the judgment seat of Christ? No person that we've won to the Lord will be there. Wouldn't that be an awful thing? And you see, we're in the time of sowing the harvest and reaping the harvest. But when that rapture takes place, that's gone, and then the tribulation and so forth and so on. If you have a friend that's lost, go after them. If you have a loved one that's lost, go after them. This is not a game we're playing. And we come in and sing and have a good time, and we should, and love one another. But this is not a game. It's not a fun thing. It's a serious thing. Now, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, I want us to think about in times like these, in times like these. Now, let's begin here in 2 Timothy chapter 3, and let's begin in verse 1, but let's pray together before we begin. Father, we thank you for the music this morning. We thank you for the fellowship. We thank you for the people in Sunday school, uh, the teachers, the leaders, uh, for these wonderful folk. And Lord, I pray that you'll bless them, and I pray that you'll use them for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to talk about times like these out of 2 Timothy chapter 3. Now listen to these verses. This know also that in the last days, we're in them right now, perilous times will come. And the word perilous, as you know, means dangerous and hard to deal with. Dangerous and hard to deal with. Now think about that. If we're living in dangerous, hard to deal times right now, what's it going to be a year from now? Two years from now? Three years from now? Now look at me. Look, look at me. Look at me, please. When was the last time you witnessed to somebody? You walked to them, up to them with a Bible and a track, and you said, Sir, ma'am, do you know if you died today you'd go to heaven? Would you allow me to take this scriptures and lead you to the Lord? That's serious business. That's not laughing business. For year after year, my mother wept because my father would not receive the Lord as Savior. I did everything I could to witness to my dad, take him, get him to go to church. He wouldn't do it. And I just couldn't stand the thought of my dad being in hell and me being in heaven. And so just kept right on going. And, of course, you know the story. I brought my mother and grandmother home one Sunday uh, from church. She, they went to our church, and of course. And my dad was laying on the bed, and he was sick. And he called me, and he said, uh, well, Bob, he said, I listened to you preach on the radio. I got on my knees by the bed, and I asked the Lord to save me, and I know I'm going to heaven. That thrilled my heart. And about two months later, he passed away and went to be with the Lord. I'm glad I stopped that morning and got serious about my dad's eternal destiny. Do you care about somebody's eternal destiny? Is there a lost man or a lost woman that you need to see that the Lord's leading you to witness to? Now listen, listen, Christian, listen. What does this say? This know also that in the last days perilous times will come. Once again, dangerous, hard to deal with. 
and it's going to get worse and worse and worse, more and more difficult again and again and again. Now think about this. This passage was written years ago, years ago, and the Apostle Paul, and, and here is this uh, matter uh, of the believer uh, and his resources and talking about uh, how we can know uh, about the future and what's going on. So let me continue to read. This know also that in the last days perilous, again, dangerous, hard to deal with times will come. For men and women shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, or I'm sorry, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontented, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Did you notice that? Despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. And for this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as James and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds. Now maybe you ought to underline that corrupt minds and then reprobate concerning the faith. They care not for the scriptures. They care not for the truth. They have very little love. They have very little compassion. All they're concerned about is themselves and what they can get for themselves. No thought about uh, lost souls. No thought about heaven. No thought about hell. And uh, Notice he says, as these two individuals, uh, James and Jambres, withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the truth. Now watch as they get closer to the rapture and so forth. But they shall proceed no further. Their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine. Of course, you know the word doctrine is teaching. Manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. Now watch. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and to Iconium and Lystra. What persecutions I endured. But out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God or the woman of God may be perfect. Now, that doesn't mean uh, that we won't fail. It doesn't mean that. But he's thoroughly, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. What are we doing to help our children grow in grace and truth and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? What are we doing to prepare our children and grandchildren for the future? You and I may be gone. We may be gone. But our grandchildren and children, they'll still be alive. They may feel the brunt of what we've just been reading about, what we've been talking about. 
But I'll tell you one thing, the scripture continues. I'll not read chapter 4. I wish I had time to do that. We've read it before. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. Now, how much of that we'll experience before the rapture, I do not know. But I do know that during that seven years tribulation, it's going to be awful. Famine. Men and women will be despisers, boasters, proud, incontented. They have no thought for anything that's good, anything that's righteous, anything uh, that's godly. But we're living right now in dreadful times. Now, how many people do you know? I'm asking you now. Listen to me. I say this a lot. How many of you right now know of men and women that just has a great desire to see people saved. How many do you know? How many people do you know that has a brother or a sister or a loved one or a friend and you have such a burning desire to see that person born again? You may not leave them to the Lord. You may fail. But we must try. And the Bible says, go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. You see, the Bible is very clear about our times and the future. And he's warning us here and he's telling us that things are going to get worse and worse. In other words, he's saying dreadful times are here and dreadful times are going to be much more intense as we stay upon this earth. How much I'll experience of that, how much of that you'll experience, I do not know. But I know one thing, I'm glad I'm going to go up at the rapture if I'm alive. I'm glad of that. I'm glad I won't remain here, and I think you feel the same way. But we need to be witnessing as much as we can. But now think with me, in times like these, but I want to try to encourage you. If you take notes, put down number one, our God, our God is still the same. He hasn't changed. And he will not change. And he is willing to do what he has always done, to reach the lost and to bring them to himself. But he works through men and women. He works through churches just like this here. What a... What, what are we going to face as a church when we stand at the judgment seat of Christ? We'll stand there as individuals, yes, but we'll stand there as a church as well. What did the pastoral staff do? What about the deacons? What about the teachers? Uh, what about those that, that, that just come and are, and are members? Are we going to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant? You see, so many of us, the thing that we're concerned about more than anything else is ourself. That's a sad thing. Now, I know we have to care for ourselves and for our families and so forth, but we ought to care about those that are lost. God is still the same. He remains unchanged. When the Bible says God is love, God is love. Now, right. now take, take this into your thoughts. If our God is a God of love, do you know what he wants to do? He wants us to know that I want you to share my love with your friends. I want you to share my love with neighbors. I want you to share my love with those that are lost. And that's what he wants us to do. And here is our God. He never changes. And he's willing to do for you what he did for the Apostle Paul as far as witnessing to people. He remains unchanged. You see, the Holy Spirit is still at work. Now watch, here's what I'm saying. If I'll get out there and witness, I have the Holy Spirit at my disposal to lead me and to guide me. I have God's power at my disposal. Now, I've been watching and listening to the large churches. And you know what I'm hearing from them? They used to see people walking the aisle again and again and again. They're not seeing that as much now. They're not seeing that as much now. Why? Because the days are getting 
more and more difficult. Dangerous time will come, the Bible says, for men will be lovers of their own selves, proud, boasters, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, incontented, and on and on it goes. That's the kind of world we're living in. And I guess I could say it like this, let's take advantage of what we have now. And I don't know how many days or years it'll be before that great intense persecution comes just before the rapture. And my dear friend, when the rapture takes place, that's when Satan comes in his fury to take over the world and to send as many people to hell as he can. Now, number two, not only our God is still the same, but we still have God's blessed book, the Bible. This book, the Bible. I love the old Bible. You ever heard that song sung? I love it. I love the old Bible, God's wonderful book, divine. Here is this book, thousands and thousands of years has been here with us. And people have used it to lead people to the Lord. Here's the answer about the past in this book. Here's the answer about the present in this book. Here's the answer to the future. Are you having problems this morning? Get in the book. Get in the book. If you're praying for somebody to be saved, get in the book. Let it be a part of your thinking. Now, this week I've been out quite a bit knocking on doors. I thank the Lord I have people with me that's going out to help me. But you know what I have found? I found uh, uh, an attitude. You just walk up to them and begin to say something about the Bible, and you can tell hate rises up. Or unconcern, oh, that's, that's a bunch of lies. There's a man that you know, most of you know, if you know me, you know him, that I've witnessed to since 1990 when I first met him. Lou knows exactly who I'm talking about. He's dealt with the same thing I've dealt with. And I love the man. And I'm not bragging, but I love the man. I remember him sitting in that pew right there where my wife's sitting with his wife. And I was preaching. I gave the invitation. And I said, won't you come and trust the Lord? And you know what he did? I could tell he had been listening. He looked up at me, and here's what he did. and went back. Now, since that time, I've witnessed to him many times. But in the last six months, I've saw more indignant of attitude than I've seen in all those years. I would hate to stand at the great white throne judgment and there's that man standing there. And he's going to hear God pronounce Depart from me into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And I would stand right there. I won't say a thing. I don't have to say a thing. And God himself pronounces judgment, everlasting fire in the presence and of the angels and the Christians that are saved in the presence of, of us. We're watching all of that. And he's cast into the lake of fire. God's still the same. Not only is God still the same, he has this blessed old book that can show a man how to get to heaven, a woman how to get to heaven. It's a blessed old book that can bring comfort to a Christian that's battling to a family that's battling. Maybe you have a son that's lost. Maybe you have a daughter that's lost. Maybe you have a dad that's lost. And you're doing your best to witness to them. They won't listen to you. And it breaks your heart. But you can get to the scriptures. Don't give up. Keep right on going. Now think about this book. It remains powerful right down through this day. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. 
It's an all-powerful word. And when that, this book is read, when this book is preached, the Holy Spirit will use it to bring to the hearts of men and women the fact they're lost and they need to be born again. And I don't know about you, but I have thought about this more in the last year than I've thought about it in a long, long time. We need comfort. We need comfort. I'll never forget at Smyrna Cemetery. My mother was there and my grandmother was there and our relatives were there. My dad's family was there. And there was dad's casket. And of course, I preached the funeral. And as I stood and preached the funeral, and the family was there, and then the casket was closed, lowered into the grave. And as the casket was lowered into the grave, you know what I was thinking? That's just a, that's a, just a body. That's just a body. You know where my dad was? More alive than me. My dad was in the presence with the Lord. My dad was in the presence of his loved ones. His dad was a Christian. He was a deacon at Concord Baptist Church. He witnessed. And I'm just simply saying, God is so good, isn't he? And he'll bless us if we will let him. Now, next, if you're keeping notes, we still have dear people that's standing for the fight that's standing for what is right. There's still some great churches preaching the word. There's still some great preachers preaching the word. There's still an average Christian, an average woman, an average man that wants to see people born again. Hear me now. Hear me. But I think that you'll agree with me. And when I get to, together with other pastors, we all sort of agree on this. I've never seen such a hardness in churches. I've never seen such a hardness in people who claim to be Christians. A hardness. When you leave this morning, and you go out that door, and you get in your car, and you're getting ready to go get something to eat, take some tracks, will you? Take some tracks, will you? And give them out. Do your best to witness. Find an open door, and just as you, you belong to a fundamental uh, independent Baptist church that preaches the truth, and, and you're a church member, and the Lord has given you the mandate to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And then lastly, if you're taking notes, salvation, salvation from sin is still available. Aren't you glad? Salvation from sin is still available. Now, after the thousand years reign of Christ on this earth, it will all be over. And only those that are born again will go out into eternity to enjoy, listen to this, to enjoy God's presence forever. Can you imagine what that's going to be like? No sin or sorrow. No dying, no lying, no stealing, no separation, no woman running out on her husband, no man running out on it, none of that. Peace and joy and happiness forevermore. You see, salvation, eternal salvation is still offered. Do you agree with me? Amen. It is still offered, and it can be obtained through repenting of your sin. God has a wonderful plan of salvation. Now, in closing, I want you to look at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Look at just a few of these verses and then we'll close in just a moment. Now, Paul was a faithful steward and he was faithful to the Lord. Did you get that? The apostle Paul was a faithful steward and he was a, was a man that was faithful to the Lord. He's talking now to these young preachers, and he says, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the quick and the dead at his appearing, and his kingdom, preach the word. Preach the word. You say, well, pastor, you're preaching the word. Yes, but you can preach the word too. 
right out on the street. You can preach it at the place that you eat. You can do it. You agree with me? All right. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. And Paul is speaking, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight, I finished my course, I've kept the faith. Henceforth there was laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but also all them that love his appearing. I hope you'll read that chapter quite a few times. From a man, listen, listen. This man went about the countryside seeking out Christians to kill them. That's what he was doing. But one day he met the king of kings. Amen. And God saved him that day. And you know what his mind and heart was completely turned around? Instead of killing Christians, now he wanted to do everything he could to make, to help men and women be born again. And here he says to this young man, preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, re exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Now look at me. How would you like to stand up here and do what I do? How would you like to stand here and look over an audience and preach the way we preachers do? You'd be surprised at what we see. But you know what we've got to be concerned with? What God's put on our heart. And many of a time I remember what Wayne Williams said to me. Bob, make sure that you are ready and prepared and there's nothing in your life that would hinder your message this morning. Make sure you get right. And if you're right, then just preach the word. Just preach the word. And I've heard that in my mind down through the years. I can't make anybody do anything. But the Holy Spirit can use a man's message to help people get saved. But now I want to turn it around. The ball's in your court now. I've preached my message this morning. Now the ball is in your court. Do you know you're saved? Are you witnessing to someone? Do you take the Bible with you? Gospel light. Let's take the gospel out there and tell people about the Lord. Let's stand with heads bowed and eyes closed, please.